All right, today in geometry, we're going to look at section 3.4, which is slope. This is actually going to be a review from Algebra 1 and before Algebra 1, so this should be a nice, easy day for us. All right, so let's just talk about slope a little bit. Carpenters use the terms rise and run to describe the steepness of a stairway or a roofline. You can use rise over run to describe slope. So remember that slope equals rise over run or slope equals the vertical change or the horizontal change. Great. If you want to look at a graph, first thing that we have to remember is that we always read our graph from left to right. So always read your graph. Just like you're reading a book from left to right. Okay, so first we're going to talk about counting units to find the slope. So if I have these two graphs here, I have a line. Notice I have these three dots that are highlighted on this line. Pick any two of those dots. Okay, so if I pick this dot here and this dot here. Again, I start furthest to the left and then I need to find one to the right of that. We're looking at the vertical change, which is the rise. So how far up or down over the horizontal change or the run, how far left or right we have to go. So from this point, I have to go up and over to get to that point. So I go up two spaces and over three spaces. Remember from Algebra 1 that slope is lowercase m. So here I would say my slope is 2 over 3, or 2 thirds. Remember, uppercase M is midpoint, lowercase M is slope. So now this one, I have two points highlighted, this point and this point. So this time from the left to the right, I have to go down and then to the right. We had to go down three spaces. We had to go right seven spaces, so our slope. So hopefully you remember from Algebra 1, if you have to go down instead of up, that's a negative. So negative 3 over 7. So I would say the slope is a negative 3 sevenths. So now we're going to practice graphing the points ourselves and finding the slope. So remember when you graph, remember that this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. You always graph x first and then y. So See. So we want to graph X first. Then Y. Remember that this is the positive direction. This is my positive X. This is negative X. This is positive Y. This is negative Y. And we all meet there at the origin. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to plot the point, I'll switch colors. I'm going to plot the point 0, 4. That means I don't go over left or right any. I go up 4. So starting at the origin, I go up 4. There's my first point, 0, 4. Now I want to plot the point negative 2, 3. So that means starting at the origin, I go left 2 because my x is negative 2, and up 3 because my y is a positive 3. There's my point. Now I want to find the slope, right? So I can connect those two. If I wanted to find the slope, it's from the furthest point to the left, how far up and over. I had to go up one block and over two blocks. So here we would say the slope was one half. Our next one, the points negative one five and one three. So if I plot the point negative one five, again, I start at the origin. I go left one and up five, and there's the point negative one five. The point 1, 3, again, starting at the origin, I go right 1 and up 3. I could connect them with my line. Find the slope, again, starting at the left. So I have to go down this time and over. So I have to go down 2 and over 2. So my slope going down 2 over 2. But I can reduce this. If you can reduce or simplify, you must do that. So negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So here we would say our slope is negative 1. And now number 3, they give me the points 5 comma 0 and 5 comma negative 6. So 5, 0, 
I start at zero, zero, I go right five, and then I don't go up or down any. So that's the point five, zero right there. And then the point five, negative six. So I go over five, down negative six, and there's that point. So this is the line. I'm trying to find the slope, okay? So again, how far did I have to go um, up or down, and then left or right? So we had to go down six, but then we didn't have to go left or right any. So my slope is six over zero. Okay. Actually negative six because I went down. Anything divided by zero in math, okay, remember what this is called. If you were to type this in your calculator, negative six divided by zero, your calculator tells you it's a math error. It's because we are not allowed to divide by zero in math. So here we say our slope is undefined. So anytime you end up with a zero in the denominator, and that's going to happen when you have, what kind of a line is this? Vertical line. So anytime I have a vertical line, my slope is going to be undefined. All right, so now let's look at the next one. We're going to plot the points 2, negative 4. So I go right 2 and down 4 and make our dot. And then the point negative 4, negative 4. So starting at 0, 0, left 4, down 4, make a dot. This time, I'm starting to the left, I don't go up any, so I'm going up 0, but I'm going over 6. So this time my slope, I didn't have to go up or down, so that's 0 over 6. 0 divided by 6 is just 0. So my slope is 0 every single time it is a horizontal line. A few more on the back. So we're going to flip our paper over. On the back, we're going to plot the points negative 6, 2, and 3, 1. So again, if I start at 0, 0, negative 6 means I go left 6 and then positive 2, up 2. There's that point. The next point is 3, 1. Again, I start back at 0, 0. I go right 3, up 1. If I were to connect those two, there's my line. I want to find the slope. So from the furthest to the left, this time I have to go down and over. Since I went down, that's a negative. I only went down once, a negative one. Count how many spaces we had to go over. That's nine. So I say my slope is negative one ninth. All right, so we see again here that our slope was a negative one ninth. Again, it was negative because we had to go down instead of up, and then um, <clears throat> nine because we had to run nine to the right. All right, let's look at number six. This is going to be the last one where we plot the points. So the point zero, zero, this is, remember, is also known as the origin. So point at the origin right there. And my next point is one negative four. So from the origin over one down four. That's the segment. So if I'm looking at start at the point furthest to the left. How far do I have to go up or down? I have to go down four and over one. So my slope is negative four over one. But we're not going to leave it like that because negative four divided by one gives me negative four. So we would say our slope is just negative four. All right, so then I gave you some pictures so that you can identify whether we have a positive slope, a negative slope, a zero slope, or an undefined slope. Again, remember that we read from left to right our graphs. Right? So you start at the far left. If from the left to the right, your line is increasing or going up, it's a positive slope. So here we have the little guy on the bike and he's riding up the hill. So it's a positive slope because he's riding up that hill. If from left to right, this next picture, we see our line is decreasing or going down, then we know we're going to have a negative slope. And so that's when our little guy's on his bicycle and he's just cruising down the hill. He doesn't have to pedal or anything. He just lets gravity take over. Then we have what's called the zero slope. And remember on the front we said this was when we had all horizontal lines. So again, we see our little guy on our bicycle and they're just cruising. Okay? 
Um, really no effort has to be put forth. Nice straight bicycling. So that's a zero slope because we don't have to go up or down any hills. So zero slope. And then our undefined slope. Remember, these are our vertical lines. And so look at our little bicycle guy. And so it's like he's riding and he comes to the cliff and he's looking over and he's got to go over that cliff. He's like, ah, I'm not too sure I want to do that. I'm not defined, right? I'm unsure. So undefined slope if it's vertical. So you need to memorize these. Vertical line has undefined slope. Horizontal line has a zero slope. Memorize those. All right, so now we're going to look at using the coordinates to find slope without graphing. So when you know any two points on a line, you can use them to find the slope of the line by using the slope formula. Again, the slope formula should not be new to us. The formula is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, as long as 0 is not in the denominator. So remember that on like number 1, negative 2, 1, and 5, 7, this is x1, y1, x2, y2. So my slope lowercase m equals, so y2, 7 minus y1, 1, over x2, which is 5, minus x1, negative 2. And then we're just going to work out what do we have. So 7 minus 1 on top is 6, over 5 minus a negative 2 turns to 5 plus 2, 7. So here our slope is a positive 6 sevenths. We cannot simplify that any. We don't have anything in common to reduce, so there's our answer. So number two, my slope. So y2 is 5 minus y1, 0. Over x2, negative 1 minus x1, 4. So now on top, 5 minus 0 gives us 5. Negative 1 minus 4 turns to negative 5. So if I have 5 divided by negative 5, I can work that out and get slope of negative 1. Number 3, the points are 5, 5, and 7, 5. So our slope, y2, 5, minus y1, 5, over x2, 7, minus x1, 5. So on top, 5 minus 5 gives me 0. On the bottom, 7 minus 5 is 2. 0 divided by 2 is 0. So here we have a slope of 0, which means this is a horizontal line. And let's look at number 4. Again, we're going to plug these points into our slope formula. So 20 minus negative 2 on top over 10 minus 10 on the bottom. On the top, 20 minus negative 2 turns to 20 plus 2, which is 22. 10 minus 10 turns to 0. 22 divided by 0. Remember, we cannot divide by 0, so this is where it's undefined. So we say our slope is undefined. Therefore, I know this is a vertical line because every vertical line has an undefined slope. All right, let's look at number five. Plug the points in, so our slope equals, so on top, 12 minus 15 divided by negative 7 minus negative 20. So 12 minus 15 leaves me with a negative 3 on the top. Negative 7 minus negative 20 turns to negative 7 plus 20, which is 13. I have a negative 3 and a 13. They don't have anything in common. I cannot reduce them, so my answer is negative 3 over 13. So I have a negative slope, which means from left to right, this line is decreasing. Number 6, plug these in. So our slope equals, on top, negative 6 minus 10 over, on the bottom, 20 minus 82. So on the top, negative 6 minus 10 gets us negative 16. On the bottom, 20 minus 82 gets me negative 62. I have two negatives, so I know it's going to be a positive. 
have a 16 and a 62. So I'm looking at, do they have any numbers in common? They're both even, so I know that 2 goes into both of them. So 2 goes into 16 8 times on the top. So I have 8 on the top over 2 goes into 62 31 times on the bottom. 8 and 31 no longer have anything in common. That is our answer. So here our slope is 8 over 31 or 8 31sts. This is a positive slope. So again, if we were to graph this, we know that from left to right, this line would be increasing. So that's a nice quick review of slope. Again, this should not be a new topic for us. We should have seen this in Algebra 1 and pre-algebra, if not before that in like sixth grade. Your homework today is the slope worksheet along with the proof worksheet. Make sure you have both of these done by tomorrow. We'll collect it tomorrow.